In this lecture, we are going to consider a new scenario. Previously, we've been assuming that we only invest in risky assets. However, we know that we could potentially invest in the risk-free asset, which has no risk. This lecture will consider the question, what happens when we split our investment into both the risk-free asset and the portfolio with the maximum Sharpe ratio? For those of you who do not like math, I'm going to start by telling you the answer. And for those of you who do like math and you want to know how and why we arrive at this result, you can listen to the second part of this lecture as well. Okay, so what happens when we split our investment between the risk-free asset and the risky portfolio with the maximum Sharpe ratio? What we get is a line. This line connects the point where we have a zero risk and return R sub F, the return of the risk-free asset. That makes sense because if my return is R sub F, that means I have zero risk. This corresponds to the case where I've invested nothing into the risky portfolio and everything into the risk-free asset. The other point that this line connects to is the point where we find the maximum Sharpe ratio. This also makes sense. This is the point where we've invested everything into that risky portfolio and nothing into the risk-free asset. Now I'm sure you don't need to be convinced that both of these are achievable. We already know how to find the portfolio with maximum Sharpe ratio, and we already know how to achieve zero risk by investing only in the risk-free asset. All you need to do is buy a T-bill. The interesting part of this is the points in between. What we will find is that these points are also achievable. But what do these points represent? If you think about it, these are points where we can obtain higher return with the same level of risk had we only invested in risky assets. Furthermore, we can obtain even less risk than the minimum variance portfolio and still achieve higher return compared to the minimum variance portfolio. So it seems that including a risk-free asset is pretty useful. In a risk-return plot, we know that going in the direction of the upper left is always better. That means we're getting higher return and lower risk. We see that this line represents portfolios which achieve exactly that. Another interesting point about this line is that it can extend above the efficient frontier. How can this be? Let's think about it this way. The point on the left where we have zero risk means that we invest 0% into the risky portfolio. The point on the efficient frontier with maximum Sharpe ratio means that we invest 100% into the risky portfolio. Therefore, we can go further than this if we invest more than 100% into the risky portfolio. How can we achieve that? We can achieve that by shorting the risk-free asset. This is equivalent to borrowing money so that you can invest more into the risky portfolio. So one interesting consequence of this line is that it is tangent to the point where we find the maximum Sharpe ratio. For this reason, we call this portfolio the tangency portfolio. It simply means that the efficient frontier is tangent to the line we just found at the point where we find the maximum Sharpe ratio. We know from calculus that tangent line means that this line has the same slope as this point on the efficient frontier. Therefore, we can also say that any portfolio made up of the tangency portfolio and the risk-free asset all have the same Sharpe ratio. In other words, the maximum Sharpe ratio is also the slope of this line. Any portfolio found on this line has that same Sharpe ratio. Okay, so in the rest of this lecture, we are going to derive everything that we just discussed. We can start by considering what we want to find. Basically, we're creating a portfolio out of portfolios. This portfolio contains the maximum Sharpe ratio portfolio with only risky assets and the risk-free asset. We would like to find the mean and variance of this portfolio. In fact, this is very similar to an exercise we did earlier in this section where we considered how to characterize a two-asset portfolio. The first asset is the tangency portfolio, and the second asset is whatever gives us the risk-free rate. 
Okay, so let's say that the tangency portfolio has return r sub t, expected return mu sub t, and variance sigma sub t squared. The risk-free asset has return r sub f and variance zero. Note that r sub f is known, so it's not random. Okay, and next, we would like our new portfolio to be some combination of the above two. So let's say r sub p is equal to w sub t times r sub t plus 1 minus w sub t times r sub f. w sub t tells us how much to invest in the tangency portfolio, and 1 minus w sub t tells us how much to invest in the riskless asset. Okay, so what is the expected return of our new portfolio? If we take the expected value of both sides, we can see that we get mu sub p equals to w sub t times mu sub t plus 1 minus w sub t times r sub f. This one should be pretty easy. Now what about the variance? We can start by taking the variance of both sides. Since the tangency portfolio and the risk-free asset are independent, the variance of the sum becomes the sum of the variances. This is because there is no correlation. However, also note that the risk-free asset is not actually random and its variance is zero. Therefore, the variance of the mixed portfolio is just w sub t squared times the variance of the tangency portfolio. Since everything is squared, we can take the positive square root of both sides to get a simple linear relationship between the standard deviations. If we rearrange this a bit, we can see that the weight w sub t can also be expressed as the ratio of the two standard deviations. As before, we would like to replace w sub t so that we can find some equation for the portfolio return in terms of the portfolio risk. That is, we want to know how the return varies with risk, because that's exactly what we are plotting when we have a risk return plot. Okay, so essentially, we want to plot mu sub p versus sigma sub p. Therefore, we have to find mu sub p as a function of sigma sub p. Since we know that w sub t is equal to sigma sub p over sigma sub t, we can just plug that in. The next step is to multiply everything by sigma sub t so that there are no more ratios. The next step is to move all the terms involving sigma sub t to the left and to move all the terms involving sigma sub p to the right. After doing so, we can factor out sigma sub t and sigma sub p. The final step is to move sigma sub t back to the right side by dividing everything by sigma sub t. Once we've done that, we can just add r sub f to both sides. This gives us the equation that you see here. So what is interesting about this equation? If you look very closely, you can see that it's linear. There are lots of similar looking symbols here, so you have to pay close attention to what the variables are. The variable for the x-axis is the portfolio risk, sigma sub p. The variable for the y-axis is the portfolio return, mu sub p. So that's why I formatted this equation in a very specific way. It's in the form y equals mx plus b. Or in other words, slope times x variable plus y intercept. We see that the intercept is the risk-free rate. This occurs when the risk is zero. Of course, that makes complete sense. This is when we've invested everything into the risk-free asset. Furthermore, we see that the slope of this line is the sharp ratio of the tangency portfolio. It's the excess return divided by its standard deviation. This means that any portfolio made up of the tangency portfolio plus the risk-free asset has this specific sharp ratio. We can also see this if we rearrange one of our earlier equations in a slightly different way. Now we have the sharp ratio of the mixed portfolio on the left and the sharp ratio of the tangency portfolio on the right. We can see that this equality always holds. Therefore, the sharp ratio of the mixed portfolio is always equal to the sharp ratio of the tangency portfolio.